everyone welcome back to the final piece of our tutorial today we're going to add our pages in we're going to do the inside covers front and back and we're going to do the actual covers enjoy hey everyone welcome back we are going to do the next part of our mini album tutorial we've done all the pages now so now we're moving on to adding our pages into our album you could do the front and back cover first i prefer to put the pages in just so i know how much space i'm going to have for each so that's what we're going to do now <clears throat> so i have done a couple of the uh, photo mats off camera but today we're going to add into our so you can do either way front or back it is totally up to you i'm going to do this my front <clears throat> Oh, and the other thing, which I did mention, and I don't know, you could, in these pieces, this is not necessarily the right width, but you can put paper in between each inch. I was going to, but I'm not going to now. So I'm going to rub out these ones that I'd written on my... Um, just when we made it they were just light with pencil so it rubs out very easily and no one will see it lovely so we're going to start let's pop these back here right i'm going to start at the back i find it easier to line them up this way but that's just me you do the front if you prefer it's up to you now rather than using my normal tool for removing the tape i'm actually going to get out where is it this one which is a hook um, we're going to start at the back so i'm going to move all the things this way i'm going to start here and this first one i'm going to peel back the tape just a little bit like so okay so this is 12 and this is 11 so again i'm going to find the center of my page which is here this is the the, play, the center point okay we're going to slide this over the hinge and we're going to line this up with the bottom of that tape there okay i'm gonna press there to stick that on and then we're gonna remove the backing push that down so now we are stuck down on this side i'm gonna turn over this is where this this um, comes in handy because i can hook out the covering she says there we go Take that off make sure that it is lined up on the tape push it down so there is our 11 and 12 months so next one do the same we're going to pull this down and this is how i thought why i find it easier starting at the back because i put them on this way it's harder to line up with the page on this side so had i done one one would be fine but then two, I put it in this side, but I've got to line it up on that side. So for me, working backwards works because um, I can line it up easier. So again, I'm going to find the centre point and apparently pop out my uh, page. Let me tuck that back under just because otherwise it's going to get in the way. And I don't want it to get in the way. Okay, oh, underneath, there we go uh yes this way so find our center again make sure you've got the center open it's come off again that page that's annoying it's fine it's just gonna make this bit difficult yeah because i'm getting it up so pop that over line 
line that up with the bottom of the tape like so hold that bit perfection check that that lines up which it does top and bottom and then come this side hook the uh, hook the covering on come on Move that, push down, excellent. Next one. And again, we're going to peel back tape, find our center point. Now, this one is going to be slightly more difficult because this book is. A solid piece so if we've got a page like this it can be slightly harder to go on it will go on this is I've just put on it will go on it's just sometimes harder there we go get that nicely lined up all the way along stick that bit down remove the tape backing check it's flush yes we are flush perfect stick that down Turn it over, remove the tape backing, this one doesn't want to come out, oh there we go, and that's why the hook is useful, push that down, excellent, right I'm going to do the other three and I'll come back to you. Excellent. So we have all of our pages added now. I added all the rest in exactly the same way. Okay, so I'm just going to cut down this flap for our back inside cover. Um, and I just wanted to check in with you because each time I've done a video in this tutorial, I've done a slightly different edit. So for some, I have left everything at full sp at normal speed. For some, I've sped a lot of it up. For some, like this one, I'm speeding up the building as well as the design paper some I've only sped up the design paper let me know what works for you because as I've said I am happy to watch an hour and two hours video for a tutorial but not everyone is so for the back cover I did a flap that has a three quarters of an inch flap to stick on and then a qu an eighth of an inch gusset so we're going to stick that on at the back and we are going to glue on our three quarter inch tab before we do anything else i've put on a gusset so that the waterfall we're going to put on the back page won't be like won't catch on everything then on front of this flap i've decided that we're going to do a belly band because this is like the first birthday they can tuck in things which are um you know like birthday cards or notes or anything to celebrate that one year milestone so i'm going to create a belly band measure it's the right set uh, measure it's the right height even and then i'm going to do my paper punch down both sides to give it a really nice decorative edge and we're going to stick that onto the front so I have cut my belly band down to size check that it fits which it does and then we're going to punch the um, edges and then we're ready to stick it on okay, so we're going to line this up with that to stick on and I'm going to do one end first so I'm going to do this bottom edge first 
you could glue, you could tape, you could do whatever adhesive you like. Bear in mind there is going to be paper covering our flap as well. So it will be okay. I'm going to make sure those lines are lined up. Make sure that this is flush with the bottom. Nice and straight. Yes, lovely. So how are you guys doing? Are you all okay? That does line up nicely, yes. So this pot's easy. You just put the glue on and away you go. Um, how are you all? Have you done anything exciting recently? Or have you got anything exciting coming up? Um, we I saw some friends the other day. Very nice socially distant evening. That was lovely to see some people. Um, where I've been shielding. I've not really seen anyone except my other half lives with me. So it was nice to see some other people. Um, obviously making sure that everyone was nice and safe. Let me give that a quick clip so that it adheres nice and tightly. Perfect. Right. So then we can figure out the sizings for our waterfall on the back. Yeah, I think we're just going to do a standard waterfall because that is easier, which means we can measure our design paper. So we've got blue. So I think we'll try and do a blue on this front bit here and we definitely want this blue and the back bit possibly just the, the solid blue cardstock we'll see so then this piece hmm. let me have a drink and i will come back to you okay so we're going to stick our flap in before we decide and I thought that we would do um, the blue on the front to match the 12 month page because we've got the blue birds on there. So once this is stuck on I'm then going to decide on the paper that we're going to use. Um, again make sure that, that is really stuck down before you put your design paper on. So I went through different bits of my scraps and then I had a brainwave. Could I use the solid blue behind the belly band? Because you don't want to use scraps when you've got a belly band. You want a piece of paper to completely cover those flaps. Because otherwise, when you pop stuff into the belly band, it can catch on the top and bottom flap. I hope that's making sense. So I cut this blue piece so that it fits the entirety of the belly band. Which means nothing can get caught on those flaps. So I'm trimming this down to five and a half inches width. Then I'm going to measure some design paper the same length in the birds and in the butterflies. Because either side of this blue piece, we are going to have um, a strip of the birds that we've got there. So I'm going to use this piece of uh, scrap printer paper just to help me hold this thin strip. Because this strip difficult in of itself to hold. So I'm lining it up. I'm holding the printer paper. And then I can cut that piece easily at a half an inch strip without it being a problem. So I'm adding in my blues. and just checking to see that the whites fit either side. I'm going to use a piece of printer paper behind just so that I can see the top, bottom and the sides of this flap just to make it easier for me to make sure these white strips fit on perfectly which they do and there's a gap and it's wonderful. So I'm going to start by putting my slow drying glue on the blue and the reason that I'm doing this is because I want to be able to wiggle it ever so slightly once I've got those um, strips in. So I line it up pretty much where I want it to be and then once I've added these white strips on, I'm going to be able to adjust the blue so that it is perfectly aligned, top, bottom and sides, for the two white strips. So they're going on with my art glitter glue. And then any adaptations that we need to do, like I'm doing there, we can just wiggle the blue slightly. And then we've got that lined up beautifully. I was going to do a blue on top of the belly band, as I said. But because I had the blue behind it, I quite liked that it had the white either side. So I thought that we would put that butterfly bit on the belly band itself. So then we've got white, blue, white, blue. I thought that was quite a nice design. There are blue butterflies and brown butterflies on this sheet. So that works perfectly with both the craft card and the blue, which I think was lovely. So again, I'm going to cut that down to the right height and width. And because it was 
I wasn't sure what I wanted to leave as a scrap for this piece. I just cut out the piece that I wanted to, so I've used my trimmer to cut out that slot. And that just gives me a little bit more freedom with my scraps, because I'll have different shapes left over. So again, my, find the top and bottom, stick that on in the centre, and we are good to go. I really, really like this back page. Um, it is going to have quite a lot of decoration on it, because again, this is our first birthday page. And we want this to be really fun and exciting to commemorate the birthday. Okay, don't cut these. So that's that page nicely done. You could, of course, put something on your quarter of an inch strip. I'm not going to. But you can add decoration to there as well. This piece, let's grab our scraps and figure out what size we are going to do our actual pieces for the photos to be. These are five and three quarters. So if I cut them at five and a half, five and a half by five is what I want. Now I've done four. Yes, five and a half by five. Okay, so we have got <clears throat> five by five and half and yes along the five inch side we we'll score it a half an inch which gives us a five and a half by four and a half piece and we're going to do this one slightly differently and because with this one you're not going to see these flaps I'm going to hide them within the design paper just so again it's a different look that's all just want these things to look slightly more interesting than all being the same design again and again so got the six of them and we're going to um Use our design paper for here. Looking nice. That's going to sit over the top. Be fine. Hulkly dokly. This is where the fun starts. Okay, so I want to measure out where I'm going to put these flaps for our photo mats on this page so I'm lining it up and I'm just marking either end of the top one and of the bottom one in the end I did adjust the top one to make it slightly higher so that we've got the same thin strip at the bottom and top then using my cutting mat and my blade I'm going to get my metal edged ruler and I'm just going to cut a straight line from one end to the other end of where the photo mat will be and then what we're going to do is we're going to stick the flap through that slot and stick it on the back so it's just another way to do a waterfall without you having to see the flaps so I'm going to cut a nice straight line making sure my fingers are out of the way I do tend to put my finger ever so slightly close to the edge of this ruler it's a habit I need to get out of I've never cut myself I just need to make sure that it's far enough away so then that will slot in the top like so and you won't be able to see the flap so I'm going to do the same for the bottom one because I've marked that already so we're going to line this up nice and straight check it's in the right place Yep, it is. We're going to cut along with our ruler. Just check that it is lined up straight because you want to make sure that your top and bottom are completely straight because these are going to be the ones that help us measure all the rest of them. So we're going to line up, we're going to cut a line from one end to the other. Now, you'll notice I lined the top one up on the left of the paper and the bottom one up on the right hand side of the paper. And I'll explain why that is. I figured this out off camera so that you guys can we don't have to watch <laughs> so we have our bottom flap here okay so that's all okay. bottom flap and this is going to be our top flap okay Oh, come on, go in. So 
So we've got those two already cut in. Now we need to add space for the other four. So we turn over and where these lines are, I've drawn lines, the length of the sheet, just so we know where the so each side is. And we want to go this side, this side, this side, this side, this side. And in fact, I haven't finished that line. It's actually come to here. So. I measured the space between here and here. And it was, for those of you who are interested, it was two and just over two and three quarters okay so one two three quarters two and three quarters so what i then realized each flap is half an inch and we want them to lay nice and flat so i've come down half an inch which is to here half an inch is here and then can you see the gap? So I've got a sixteenth there. Then another half inch, a sixteenth, half inch, a sixteenth, half inch, a sixteenth, half inch. So then I know I've got enough space for each slot. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six slots. And I've just alternated them. One on this side, 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 one on this side. And then all I'm going to do is cut those lines <coughs> on my mat. Okie dokie. So we now have the large number of slits in that one. Yep. Got one, two, three, four, five, and six, where we're going to slot our pieces through. I'm going to start at the bottom. Let me pop that up out of the way. Um, so we're going to start with the bottom one just so that we can then make sure they're all secure each time. So again, we're going to check it straight. It is straight there. I'm going to turn it. I'm not going to move anything. We're going to put some glue underneath it. And ordinarily I would put tape on it because I'm doing lots. I'm going to put tape over all of them. So I'm just going to open this up. Check that we've not got glue everywhere we shouldn't have. Check that that is nice. Lovely. Let's do the rest. A baby boy at that so good girl you stay down there well done. right <sighs> I remove the cap there so now we have our flaps we've got one two 
three, four, and they do, they will lie flat. I'm just trying not to bend the, um, the paper too much until it's secured. So those are there. So they are all lined up nicely. This one needs to go down further. Oh, come on. So with this piece, it's quite easy to make mistakes. As you can see, I'm having to peel this one up and that's absolutely fine. That's why I've only put a little bit of glue on for now so that you can adjust if you need to because this one, as I turned it over, it had gone slightly wonky. So it was not lining up with the um, pieces underneath it. So you just need to adjust and adjust and then once you're happy, you can add some tape over the top just to give it a little bit more security just to make sure that everything is ready when we are done. So you can see there the gap between each flap where we measured it. There we go. Now you can do a page like this with um, a lot less flaps. Um, they do look nice quite spread out but I think those will look quite nice like this stepped near each other. Right so now we got those are all in the right place. I'm going to get my huge double-sided tape, my large one. This one is, if I remember correctly, an inch, inch and a, almost an inch and a quarter. I did punch the or chomp the corners again that would have been so much easier before I fit them in but I get um caught up in what I'm doing so this is going to sit on our back cover like so and then when you lift each piece you don't see the flap which is nice so that will sit Whoop. sit there so those are all done now and that's why we need our um, quarter of an inch gusset so that that can sit on top once there are photos in as well. This page I'm going to leave for now and we're going to move on to our front cover. So let's close this. So front cover. First thing I'm going to do is just fix this crack. Which is easily done and the reason that's cracked purely is because my cardstock is so thick that it doesn't like receiving score lines sometimes and so that was literally just where I scored slightly too hard and created a gap which we'll just get shortly so so the back cover we do first birthday for the front cover I tend to do um prenatal so I think we're going to do the same thing we're going to have a flap that is opening to the side so let's then do a pocket and we've got this piece that was a cut off um, from making this flap, so we'll just use that. Ta -da. Do we want it a bit shallower? No, I think that's a good size. So, this pocket's going to be mm, slightly different. So, what we're going to do first, we're going to do our half inch. And then we're going to do an eighth. 
So you've got half an inch and then five eighths. Okay. What I'm going to do right now is fold the five eighths line. I just need to figure out a length. That's all. And now, there we go. space okay That's where we're going to cut off. And I'm going to fold and confirm before I do the bottom. So again, we're going to fold, I'm only going to fold that inner my score line, like so. Check if it fits. Check that it fits. Yes, it does very nicely away from that edge as well. So now I'm going to unfold this and we're going to do exactly the same on the bottom. So we're going to do half an inch. And then an eighth of an inch. And now very carefully we're going to fold all of these lines. So now what we're gonna have is you're gonna have a pocket with an eighth of an inch depth. So you will have a pocket like that just gives you a little bit of extra space to um, deal with this what we're going to do is we're going to cut up to the edge of this line so to the second score line from both sides and we're going to cut that out like so same on this side And I'm also going to, this is going to stick on like this, okay, I'm also going to, no I'm not going to, right, so before we stick it into the book, I'm going to punch my edge, so I've also cut down those edges just to make it easier, but I cut from the outermost score line, not from the first one because you still want to be able to see any of the pattern on the side. So first step is to make sure that our hinges are all nice and sharp. Well, we have just done this, but I'm doing it just before we glue to make sure. And then I'm going to glue this corners first. So I'm going to put some glue here and here. I'm going to stick my and we're going to line up these pieces like so same on this side making sure that those line up now, 
if you have a tiny bit of this hanging over the edge or if um, you feel like it's a bit too bulky you can just trim off this edge like so I'll trim this one to there and then we'll stick it on it works exactly the same way just put some glue on pop whatever it is underneath to secure the corner make sure that you have got a corner like so then let, let, then let the glue dry wow <laughs> oh, i can't put my get my words out today let's put my teeth in straight so now we have a pocket with a very small but very noticeable and it will make a big difference in the end um gusset basically and that we can then stick into our book i think before i do that we're going to cover this front piece we've got the punch on the inside here do we want the punch on this edge as well i don't think we do or do we I think that's okay. So I am going to um, carefully, carefully punch this. Don't do that. Love it. Okay, so I'll do the bump. Bump. And do the stalk. Stalk, sorry on the flap. Okay, I'm going to go and have dinner and I'll be back tomorrow. Right. Wait. Like, literally. Wow, okay. What made you fall over? Cat, you are weird. Okie dokie, I am back. It is not the next day. It is after dinner. Um, I decided to come back down after dinner because I was in the zone. So, and I've already forgotten what I was doing. This. This is for here, isn't it? Righty-ho, this is just getting worse and worse, this. I'm going to have to cover that, I think, before I put my um, design paper on. I'm going to have to cover that. That probably easier to cover before you put it in the book, just because of the um, little gusset that we've got. But there is a pocket. I'm just trying to get these edges to go, which is what I mean about it's probably easier to burnish this before you stick the back piece together. I'm just trying to get that edge to stick down and it's not wanting to. It's being a pain in the bottom. Pain the bum, we'd say. Okay, so we have our um, stalks on this page, which will be sort of the <clears throat> mum and bump, or um, as I said, the baby shower or anything, which can also come here. 
could do the picture here. I've got a thicker pocket here that's going to have some um, photo mats in, but also will be space for things like, you know, the lock of hair, the hospital bracelet, all those things can slot in. I'm going to make an envelope that goes in for things like that to stay in. <clears throat> so we need to cover this backing. And I want it to be a nice paper because we are right at the start of this. I want to this whole page to not have any of the solid colour. I'd like it all to be covered in actual design paper. But the problem with that is we don't have a piece big enough. So we're going to have to go to our, our, our paper pad and pick out a new sheet. So in the end, I decided on the patchwork page uh, because I thought that was a nice addition. And I figured out that I needed a block that was two squares deep to go into the pocket and three squares width to fit on the page. So I went through and tried to decide which squares I wanted to use for that. See, and this baffles me as well, right? And uh, go with it. Fraction of the pattern, fraction of the pattern, fraction of the pattern, fraction of the pattern, the whole sheet. Why? I don't know. Okay, so then I was looking through trying to figure out which set of six squares I wanted. I didn't really want to use the same designs as I have on that page. So I cut out a set here and then I measured the size to figure out the proper width because I needed to trim a little bit off each side. So I was squeezing it into the pocket to see what would fit. I gave it a quick measure, cut it down, and then we stuck it on. And then I was able to create the background to this pocket. And again, I really, really love this front flap for pre-baby. For our cover, we've got a couple of things. Um, you can use Tyvek when you are building your cover to give it some extra um, security on these corners. I didn't because I'm going to be using this which is um, it's fab Fablon, which is sticky back plastic, but it's got this nice blue floral print on it, which I thought would work well with the album. So let me take the cover off. So yeah, it's this nice floral sheet. And I thought, we just cover, say, a bit of the side, a bit of the back, a bit of the side, so. So I trimmed this down, and the best part about this, if you've ever used sticky back plastic, anything like this, we used to cover our books in school with it, is it has lines to cut across, which means that you can cut a relatively straight line. Well, I can cut a relatively straight line without needing to use my paper trimmer. So I cut down the width, and then going to cut down the height, so that we have got um, a nice straight piece ready to fit on now it is going to need some adjustments because this is you know a very rough and we need to make sure it's got you know the the top and bottom bit between as our design paper is going to have so that fits around our spine like so and then we're just going to um, pop a hole in so I can put the dangly charm on you can see there the silver piece that I'm going to include so I measured where I wanted it on both the album and the plastic punched a hole I'm then using my um silver holder to put it in the hole and there we go it is nicely in now in the right place so i know where it's going to go again i'm checking it around my album to make sure i'm going to cut down this front piece of design paper now i know that i wanted this design so i'm just going to check that it fits and figure out what i want in it because i want the pram but i also want those flowers at the top so i'm having to have a quick adjustment and see how i'm going to use those flowers so what I did first was I cut down the side, make sure we had a nice straight line close to the um, pram, cut down the bottom so that we've got a nice line and it's not too much empty wasted space underneath them, then figured out where I was going to cut along the top. And as I said, I want to keep the bird and the flowers in. So I decided to fussy cut the flowers out. Once I'd figured out the height, I cut those flowers off so that I can still use them. And then we're going to trim the paper right down to the right height so that we are using the full design and then once that I've done that I'm going to stick those flowers on over that cut edge so that it all fits in nicely together. Okay, okay. So 
this is going to be our main image on the cover like so let me get it so i've got my mat even broader so that's going to be there and then this piece is going to cover this corner but it's going to be raised up on some chipboard so that we get a bit of shadow and so you can still see the bird underneath which is good okay so i then designed my back cover and i cut the um squares out of that punchwork piece and then i used a die to cut them down to the right size so i've stuck my front sheet on we're now going to start sticking our plastic on and all i did was i peeled back a little bit you don't want to peel off too much peel back a little bit so that we can stick this on neatly there you go peel off a little bit line it up nicely make sure it's going to be straight all the way around if it doesn't join the paper exactly it's not an issue because we are going to cover that with some ribbon to make sure that it is all you know protected and lined up nicely we're then going to go all the way around doing a little bit at a time and making sure we're rubbing it in so there's no bubbles all the way around to the back once we've got onto the back we can then stick on our homemade patchwork sheet which does fit perfectly the reason i did this was because had i done it with just the page as it was I'd have had to cut bits off squares and as you saw earlier in this tutorial I don't like doing things that aren't completely symmetrical so by creating my own patchwork page I was able to make sure that it fits on beautifully so we're going to stick this on the back make sure it's lined up nicely with our plastic so I've used my slow drying glue and some tape just to give it a lovely extra piece of security and we're going to stick this on nicely then it was bedtime so i am coming back the next morning <laughs> so i've got my cut offs from my chipboard which i'm using to put on the back of this little piece and i did do two layers to start but then i changed my mind and turned it to one so um yeah we're gonna make sure that is stuck on nicely and then i realized my error i don't know if you guys can spot it um, I was absolutely distraught. I'd stuck it on upside down. <gasps> oh, okay, so I ripped it all off and started again. Um, don't do this. Don't do this. Always check. <laughs> Always check. I added a ribbon closure front and back. I added the ribbon to cover the join on both. I've added the front piece on the chipboard and I've added these metal corners. And now we are going to work on the charm. So I've got a number of options and we'll have a look. So I have these, um, are they acrylic? Yeah, acrylic dummies or pacifiers. So there is a blue, could do a green or a yellow because there's a lot of yellow in this um, paper pad. I have got the pram. I've got the teddy, just trying to think, because the one I used inside, which was the um, blocks I'm not going to use, but I also have metal dummies, I have these gorgeous little hearts that say baby boy and baby girl, and then I have a sort of random selection which have got mostly footprints in so let's do that one so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna decide where and how i'm gonna attach a chain to this with a jump ring and we're gonna have some bits dangling off now i'm torn because some people do do this with ribbon but i'm not gonna do it with ribbon i'm gonna do it with um some silver chain i think Probably the best option for me. I'm trying to think. But you do whatever works for you personally. Oh, okay. Where did, where did it go? Where did I put it? Did I put it back in? I must have. I'm going to edit this and be really annoyed at myself for losing it. Anyway, right, so... I'm fairly sure that this, I'm going to give it a quick test with this one. I'm pretty sure that this largest um, jump ring I've got will fit around this 
Yes, you will. Perfect. So we're going to build off of this. So I'm going to pop it on for a second. I've attached that on and I'm just going to figure out the longest length of chain because then I can cut shorter pieces so if this is hanging here that is pretty much the longest that I really want so we'll should have done that I'm gonna add two hands to use so we're gonna snip this link come on wow that is not wanting to work fine let me confirm the length again yeah that's still the right Right link. That was easier. Let's use that one then. Pop this one away. I didn't have one of these in my old set, so I'm quite pleased that it works. Right, let's release this. then this is going to be our longest piece of chain since we've got a jump ring and everything else on we'll have one that is oh dear doesn't want to stay still does it there we go this is, watch this is where magrat appears just to make life difficult so we'll grab one there Or not what is going on oh, I've got no strength in my hands that's the problem my hands are killing me today but you know I need to get to this beautiful get this finished there we go right let's measure another one that length no in fact I want to do them all different lengths because um then it will look nicer <laughs> Oh, that one worked right away. Good job. Okay. Let's decide what I want before I figure out how many I'm going to do. So, I definitely want this one and this one. I think maybe five, and we just won't use the uh, acrylic ones. So we want one even shorter than this, which is going to be interesting. I mean, that is really short. Whoop. Okay. And then I think we'll do one in between those two lengths because um, that one is very short. So... I lay that there. Yeah. Lovely. So once I'd cut them all to the right length, I chose which charm was going to go on which um, length chain because, of course, you want the charms to finish at a different point as well as the chains. So um, then I attached a smaller jump ring to each end of the chain. 
So one will go through the charm and the chain, and one will just go through the top of the chain. Um, just because the large jump ring that needs to fit around the ring on the album would not go through a chain this thin. So I'm going to have to use the two jump ring method. So each length of chain has a charm stuck to a jump ring, which is attached to the chain. And then the other end of the chain just has a jump ring on. And I did that for every single length. So each piece has a top and bottom. Then I'm going to, using the larger jump ring, attach it to the album. Now my original plan was to put them all on one large jump ring. But because the album jump ring, if you were looking at it, is flat. Um, so you can see the whole of the ring. If I then added a large jump ring, it would be on the side. So then if I attached every single chain to that jump ring, all the charms and things would end up sideways, which I didn't want. So in the end, what I did was I used a larger jump ring on each end. So you'll have charm, jump ring, chain, jump ring, large jump ring, how it attaches to the album. So in the end, there will be five of the larger jump rings attached to the large ring on the album and that gives a really nice look additionally because it means that you can move each charm separately so if you're showing someone or if someone wants to look at it they can pick up just one charm rather than the whole piece um, and I think actually in the end that worked out really nicely and it looked um, a bit more spaced out a bit more professional if that makes sense so I've gone through and I'm doing all of those and I do have to apologise because in a minute my camera dies and I didn't notice. So I do lose an, a tiny bit of the footage but I'm sure you'll be able to follow exactly what I'm doing. So each chain now has its charm on the end. And then we're going to attach the final jump rings across the top. And attach that to a larger jump ring. Okay, And then we're going to attach that large jump ring to the album as you can see so I've got a large jump ring I'm attaching my chain to it and I'm going to stick that onto the album sorry for this bit being ever so slightly off camera it was a little bit fiddly to do on camera um, it was a bit more difficult for everyone to see so and I did keep dropping things you know yay for having fingers that don't like to hold things so I've then attached it there as you can see a large jump ring to the chat the album and then my my charms are dangling down the side and they all went on perfectly with the exception of the pram charm um, you'll see me here in a minute I have to adjust it because when it lays flat where it was attached to the chain and I hadn't touched it correctly you were seeing the back of it which you know isn't what you want so here we go I'm gonna have to I'll quickly turn the charm around here um, the all the other charms are double-sided so it wasn't a problem it was literally only the pram charm that I had to adjust once it was on and that's absolutely fine it took about 30 seconds you know it was it's an easy mistake to rectify so I'm going to attach the rest of the charms on now um, and then I will show you the finished article I'm so so excited about how this whole piece came out it's absolutely oh I love it I love it I love it okie dokie so I have done the dangle on the side I pop it here I try and get them untangled first and I changed my mind slightly so I use the big jump ring for each individual chain so they can move separately rather than clipping them all onto one um, large jump ring I thought that worked better so we've got the dummy the push chair the buggy and um, the pram sorry the baby boy heart the foot and the little teddy bear all on the side and they hang nicely there then on the front we've got our ribbon down the side, our flowers that are raised up and you can see the bird's tail underneath which is lovely. You get some shadow. I'm probably going to add some flowers on before <clears throat> um, I do the final walkthrough but yeah I'll have a think about that. And then we've got our ribbon closure here and when we stand it up so you can tie it tighter but once you've got all your photos and things in it can still tie up we've got plenty of ribbon so yeah thank you very much for spending time with me today um i'll be back with a walkthrough keep crafting and i'll see you soon bye